So y'all, how many of y'all have enjoyed our quicksand series? How many of y'all have enjoyed it? So I want some of you, because you know we're a very interactive church up in here. Y'all did phenomenal. Thank you, thank you. Thank you to all my dream team. So how many of you, somebody yell out what you've gotten this month so far in this, this, this series. Don't stay stuck. What else? Endure the process to enjoy the process. What? You have a choice. Period. Say it again. You have a choice today. Rise from the ashes. Never give up. Stop comparing yourself to others. Hurt people, hurt people. Heal people, heal people. Dropping them bars. What else? Huh? Stay steady. What else? Girl, I like you. I love a church that takes notes. Because on Monday, you're going to hit something. And if you don't take notes, you're not going to be able to go back and read and remind yourself of what happened on Sunday. What else? Take accountability. How many of you have a hard time taking accountability? Come on, I think it's natural. Man, I was on the plane yesterday flying home, and there was this couple. They were fighting like dogs, like, like fighting. I mean, so uncomfortable. I was like sinking down in my chair for them thinking, y'all look like a fool. She would go at him, and he'd go at her, and they were raising their voices, and I heard the Lord say, that used to be you. That used to be you. Toxic behavior just from one relationship to another relationship. Who are you to sit and judge them? Sure enough, by the end of the flight, they were laughing at each other. I was like, can y'all imagine living like that? I used to live like that. And there's nothing like realizing that you're not in, in quicksand. And the behavior that you've had your whole life does not have to stay that way. See, quicksand, quicksand happens when events happen in your life that paralyze you. Whether it was when you were a kid, whether it was you went to a church and they never saw you, you were invisible, you did all this work and you never got seen. It could have been in school when you had to leave your class because you were special ed and every day you had to leave and you'd walk out and just kind of dip. It could be you being married and seeing all your friends look like they got the best marriages on the planet, but yours is terrible. It could be you doing all this work at your job and never getting the praise. Or it could be like me. I remember uh, uh, the, 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 the shift really for my life because I, I was so angry at my life that I was in quicksand that I could easily just do this and get out of. But I didn't get out of it because I was codependent on the deprivation and pain. So it was easier for me to stay in the quicksand because at least as long as I was in the quicksand, nobody was expecting anything out of me that was good. So I didn't let people down. And I remember one shifting season for me was right after we, because it took several for me to finally get it. Like, just one, one shift ain't going to do it for some of us. Some of us are ratchet and need righteousness in our lives. And it just takes us a little bit longer. And that's okay, because when we finally get it, <laughs> you realize why the devil kept trying to trip you up, right, with the storms you created yourself. And I remember one day, we're sitting down here. We'd, I just walked through a divorce, and it was like 18 years after my marriage didn't work. And I'm sitting down here at Royal Sticks with my mama and my daddy and my two sons. And I remember my oldest, he ain't here today, so I can talk about him. That's what happens when you don't show up to your work. <laughs> he ain't watching me either. I know that, so we good. And I remember, thank you, I remember he kept, he was so angry at the divorce that I would live so ashamed that one day he come home and his brother comes home and we looked at them and said, we got till midnight to get out of this house. So he was living in a $500,000 house behind gates. His mama was driving a Navigator Mercedes because I like nice cars. And I mean, we were, he had all the best games. They had all the greatest toys. He wanted a zoo. I'd go buy him rabbits and fish, and we'd have a whole zoo in the house because I was guilt parenting. 
Because I knew that I was in a season of killing myself in sin and in this relationship. But I refused to leave because of my pride. And because I was afraid I was going to go to hell on the slip and slide. And so we move here to Atlanta. I'm beating myself up. I'm literally quicksanding it every single day. I'm getting deeper and deeper in the quicksand. I'm not trying to fix myself because I feel like there's no way to fix myself because now I'm 36, 37 years old and there's no turning back once you've done all the bad stuff I've done in my life and you've ruined all these relationships. Why not? What what you going to do now? Everybody's talking about you. They done wrote you off. People never forget what you did. Never. And so I was finding myself so depressed in this hole. Well, Morgan was literally so angry that he was punching holes in the walls. And then he would tell us, I can't help it. Now, we're living with Mimi and Papa. Mimi and Papa, I don't know if you knew Papa before he got dementia, but he didn't play. In fact, they were in the floor every night praying. We go from no church, no God. For 10 years, I was mad at God, so we didn't go to church. To moving in with my mom and daddy. And every single night, they're laying in the floor. (laughs) Watching revival on TV. So my kids go from no Jesus to now Mimi and Papa every night are in the floor. And I know they're praying for me. They're speaking in tongues, like going to the nail salon and not knowing what they're saying. So I knew those, that heavenly language was for me. So every single night, no lie. If y'all know Mimi, when Mimi gets sick and tired of being sick and tired, she will be on. It is like she is like holding on to the pits of hell, grabbing for all of us to get out. And she is rocking back and forth. Her nose is red. She's bawling. And I'm like, man, she is going to war for me. And it made me realize, (laughs) it made me realize that Mimi was fighting stuff for me in the spirit realm. And I didn't know at the time because I was so caught up in my own pain that my boys were struggling. And so Morgan is knocking holes in the walls. And every time Mimi would say, son, what happened? He said, I fell. I said, son, what's wrong? You got vertigo? Like, what's wrong? Should we go to the doctor to get you checked? Because you sure are falling a lot. Because I believed him. I couldn't even imagine that he was so angry that he's punching holes in the walls. Then all of a sudden, we start looking at his car, and his car had dents all in the car where he would just get mad and hit his car. And he would say, I can't help it. I can't help it. I'm so angry. He said that my father should be in my life right now. You should be normal, mom. You should be, we should have our own home. Daddy should have gotten it together. Now I got hair growing up here out of my eyeball almost because I didn't know that shaving, you should stop right here. So every time he would tell me something else, I'd feel like, man, I'm such a terrible mom. I, I just couldn't keep it together. And the more I beat myself up, the more I got in quicksand. And it was like one day we're sitting at this restaurant and he is letting me have it. And all of a sudden my daddy stands up and my daddy says, don't, my daddy loved it. Oh, he loved me. He said, don't you ever talk to my daughter like that again, son, or I'll have my foot in your face. And Morgan gets up and he walks out of the restaurant and he's angry. At about 12 o'clock that night, the sheriff of Fayetteville calls us and says, come get your son, his car, because your son's going to jail. And I started bawling. And I said, oh, my God, immediately more quicksand. I started thinking, oh, my God, this sweet boy. Because, y'all, even though he was hitting holes in the walls, he was still so sweet. He was a sweet boy, but he had lost his way because of his mom and daddy's actions. And so here I am getting caught up in quicksand because I think there's no way to fix it. He goes to jail. We go out there. They know who we are because my daddy's pastor in this church. And they said, come get his car because we, you're going to have to pay for him to get out of jail. And we don't want the car to be impounded because that's another expense for you. And we know this isn't your fault, Pastor Jones. I spend the night with my mom and dad that night and I'm bawling my head off. I'm laying in the middle of my mom and daddy at about 37 years old, crying harder than I've ever cried in my life. I was grieving the death of all the stuff that I had done in my life. That it got me in quicksand. Sometimes you got to have a whole meltdown. Sometimes you got to have a meltdown. You got to own it. And then you got to climb out of it. If you got to claw yourself out of it. But you got to realize, devil, this is where the assignment that you've got on me and my children stops. I might not know where I'm going, but you ain't touching me and my family. I am a bloodline breaker, even though I didn't feel like I was a bloodline breaker. 
And I remember that night, Mimi looks at me and she said, baby girl, she said, this is, this is your chance. I said, for what? She said, to get up and change you. This is a chance for you, your boys to see you live. Because right now you've been dying. I, you're in quicksand. She didn't say quicksand, but I was in quicksand. She said, baby, you living the way you're living. You got one foot in and one foot out. And you're letting a whole bunch of church people stop you from going all in for Jesus because you're letting them put the price tag on you. And she said, but I'm here to tell you, baby girl, because that, that lady right there, the reason I'm standing up here is because that woman right there never lets up. She never lets up. And that night she began to lay hands on me and my daddy lay hands on me and they said, you're getting out of this thing, baby girl. And when your son walks out of that jail tomorrow, he gonna walk into your arms and he's gonna be repentant. And you ain't never gonna bring it up again. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, your payback is gonna be you getting it together. That day I started getting out of quicksand. When that boy come walking out of that jail, People already knew who I was. I was already on Preachers of Atlanta. And my son walking out of that jail and everybody in there knew who I was. And when that boy walked out, he fell in my arms, 6'5". He ain't never hit another wall. He ain't never hit another door. He ain't never been angry another day in his life. Why? Sometimes God will wreck your plans when he sees your plans are about to wreck you. And when you stop allowing what you walk through to be passed down to your children because you won't own it and fix it. I would die for my kids. How about you live for your kids? Well, my baby mama won't let me in his life. You better fight. Well, I'm a single mom and I'm tired and baby daddy don't do nothing. You better fight. Today, me and Mimi leave downtown at about 8.15. We get stopped because there's racers coming down. Keep playing with me. That's so pretty, Daddy. There was racers. We sat there for one hour. And I was stopped. There was no way out. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm never going to make it to church. We sat there for one whole hour while these runners were just slowly raining heaven. They couldn't even go. I was like, oh, is it going to ever end? What kind of race is this? There was no warning, nothing. Every time I would try to back up, somebody else would come behind me. Everybody sat there for an hour. And I'm like, are we all just going to sit here or somebody going to find a way out? Finally, 9 o'clock hit. And I thought, I'm about to make a pass. I pulled around and I backed up. And I maneuvered my car in a way that I looked at the sidewalk. And I thought, I bet my car will fit on that sidewalk. But in my spirit, I thought, you're going to get a ticket. You're going to get a ticket. I thought, I'd rather get a ticket than miss my church. So this thing rose up in me after I sat for a whole entire hour. And I backed up, and I turned my car around, and I went against the traffic, and I did it on the sidewalk. One hour sitting there. Drove up the sidewalk the wrong way. Turned the corner and I was like, ha! I cannot believe I just sat there for a whole hour. I'm a whole rebel. Then all of a sudden, as I was coming out of my street and I was going down, I saw 30 more cars following me. And I heard the Lord say, every single situation that you ever find yourself in, there's always a way out. But a lot of times we play safe because we feel like we're stuck, but we're not stuck. We just won't move. We just won't move. My marriage sucks, so I just don't change. I don't see a way out, so I just stay. My job stinks, but at least I get $500 a week. It's better than nothing. God did not create you to barely get by. He 
created you to go against the grain. Well, they said our marriage was never going to work anyway. Now everything they said is true. You better fight and break that generational curse. Well, my mama died. Now I got a lump. Let me go sit down in my quiet time and make my funeral song list. I can only imagine what that day will be like when I walk face to face. You better stop planning your funeral and get up. You shall live and not die. So I'm going to give you some tools today. Things I did to get myself out of the quicksand. Because if you don't like your life, change it. Quicksand is only quicksand when you start letting whatever you're going through become bigger than your God. My life is over. Now I'm 50 years old. I wasted 30 years with that joker. Who gonna want me now? Somebody better than that joker. Because God never ends in a deficit. Jesus is the reason you're on this planet. Jesus wants to be glorified in all that you do so your life can be a testament. It's all about Jesus. And he does not fail. We quit. Listen to this. I'm going to go to a shorter scripture. Proverbs 4.13. It says, hold on to instruction. I just saved y'all 12 verses. Because I feel like I'm making my point. The most important scripture out of all the texts that I'm reading today is this one. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Well, what's my instruction, Paris? Hold on just a little while longer. Because Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans to bless you and not harm you, give you a future and a hope. His plans are to prosper you. And when you don't know what to do, another plan he has for you is Psalms 46 and 10. That says, Be still and know that I am God. My job is to get well from the last season and get myself in position to prosper. Because I'm about to be like a slingshot. I'm about to get pulled all the way back. Oh! When he lets me go, baby, I'm coming out. I want the world to know. Yeah! You a testimony. It says, hold on to instruction. Do not let go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Blessed is the man. Who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. That means I ain't listening to nobody that ain't lived and li that ain't directed by God. I don't want your opinion. I want what Jesus said that needs to be done in my life. So I will not listen to counsel that is not of God. So I'm going to fruit check your life. If you ain't doing nothing. If your life ain't got no fruit. Because this season's personal. If I get a bad doctor's report and somebody tells me, oh, if it's God's will, you're going to be, go bye. It is God's will for you to be healed. That's why he got on that cross. That's why you ain't got to walk around with depression and walking around like a zombie because you ain't got so much medicine inside your body, baby. Sometimes we got to go through so that we can come up. And then we'll have empathy for other people. You had to walk through that divorce so you would have empathy. You had to walk through that sickness so you would have empathy. Well, I could have really gotten empathy another way. But there ain't nothing like hitting rock bottom. <laughs> and finding out the rock at the bottom, which is Jesus, baby. Because can't nobody tell me God ain't real now. Oh, I done lost it all and got it back and lost it again and got it back and lost it again and got it back and bailed my kid out of jail and got it back. Oh, I done lost You can't tell me that God ain't real. 
I've had people walk out on me and God walk in. And you know how many times? It's the people that say, I'll never leave you. They're going to leave you. Go to get yourself braced. In fact, go ahead and realize God uses people as sandpaper. He says, hold on to my instruction. Blessed is a man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the seat of the sinner. I'm going to look at your life, and if you're living like hell, I ain't listening to you. You hear me? This is why you got to be fruit inspectors, y'all, because social media will fool you. There are people out there that got, oh, I'm a life coach. They went and got it off Zoom. I'm going to need somebody with a limp. I need you to be walking like this with your hair half out. Because I'm going to need to know you made it through something, single mama. I'm going to need you to know you made it through something, sir. I'm going to need to know that you walked through hell. I'm going to need to know that you know how to pray. I'm going to need to know that you've walked through something that has allowed you to get some oil on your life, baby. Because beautifully broken is where God does his best work. Blessed is a man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the seat of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scorn before your delight is in the law of the Lord. You stand like a tree. What happens to a tree? Huh? Huh? It don't move. In fact, you're like a palm tree. Every time storm comes and bends you over, when you come back up, you're stronger than you were before you fell over. That's who you are. Here's what you got to do to get out of hell. You ready for this? To break cycles in your life. Number one, you got to realize that you were born for a purpose. Write that down. I am born for a purpose. I am born for a purpose. Well, what is it, Kim? Stop thinking too much. Go where your gravity. That's your purpose. What do you keep going back to? Serving somebody. That's what it is. It's, it's loving people. That's what it is. Well, I can't stand people, girl. I hate people. You need to start praying for God to let you love people. God, let me love people like, like I used to hate people, y'all. Ain't you glad I fell in love with y'all? I used to hate people. They'd be like, so-and-so going to be there. I'm like, well, guess who ain't going to be there? I was a queen of making plans and never showing up. And I love when somebody said, oh, I need to cancel tonight. I'm like, yes! Now I love people. It's my favorite hobby. So you were born for a purpose. And by the end of the year, we're going to help you figure out what your purpose is. How many of you know what your purpose is? Lift up your hand. How many don't know? Not many. I'm proud of y'all. That's okay. Your purpose is that thing that almost killed you. Think about that thing that almost killed you. That's the lane you're going to flow in. That's why I love people. I love everybody. And I love like Jesus because love covers a multitude. My purpose is to love the hell out of people. And I do it very well. Okay? Because I worked hard to get here. Number two, what makes you different? What makes you different? Somebody yell out. What makes you different? Yell out. No. But girl, thank you, boo. That's my boo right there. She followed instruction. Tell me what makes you different. Yell it out. I'm loud. I'm loud. Your style. What else? I like to talk. Who's that? Girl, you better talk. What else? You better start that podcast. You did. What else? Your winning drive. What else? A good listener. That's rare. What else? Hey! Y'all, that's hard. Y'all don't realize that is a whole job. What else? Because you do so good too, Jenny. What else? I'm empathetic. Yes! Empathetic. What else? Huh? Oh, I do too. I have the ability to see both sides. What else? Some of y'all need to prophesy. You may not be there yet, but this is where you're going. What else? Perseverance. What else? 
very loyal. That's rare. What else? You got wisdom, Paris. That's why you're still single. You're lying. N not, yeah, not. Wisdom. God gonna bring you somebody though. He gonna bring you, he gonna bring you not a delicious Delilah, but a Ruth. She gonna be fine. What else? Creative. What else? Your energy. Anybody want to prophesy? You don't see it yet, but you know what's in there? How many feel like you lost yourself somewhere? Look at this, man. How many feel like you ain't found it again? Stick with me for the next two months. You hear me? You're going to find it. And it's going to be greater than what you lost. Because I lost it too. But when I came out of it, I ain't never losing it again because I'm so, I'm, I'm too much. You know what my gift is? I am fun. I have so much fun. I'm on a hundred all the time. I get on people's nerves, but they love me anyway. I also have the ability to think everybody's confused fans when they're haters. They're hating on me. I'm like, you don't hate me. You really love me. I know you do. My son's like, no, they really hate you. I'm like, no. They just don't know me yet. So you were born for purpose. What makes you different? This is your homework this week. Write down what makes you different. And it's probably something you laid down because a counterfeit came in your life and told you it was not a good trait. Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he brought somebody in your life to, they used to love your thick thighs. And after all of a sudden they realized, man, she too good for me. He too good for me. Then they started breaking down the very thing they fell in love with. Because the enemy knows our weaknesses and he gets in the hole of our weaknesses. Number three, what idol in your life do you need to release? before the end of the year. So listen, an idol, because I know y'all asking now, I'm so good, I think of it all. Anything that can talk you out of obedience to God. You can't just kill it, you gotta kill it quickly. It's that thing that some of y'all just breathe really hard. Like, ugh. It's going to be too hard. And you listen to me. If you're married, it cannot be your husband. <laughs> or your wife. That is your commitment. If they ain't beating on you, and y'all just have fallen out of love, you figure it out. Go home and turn on some Lionel Richie tonight and make some fruit dessert. But for the rest of this month, you literally give love notes to each other, put perfume on lo love notes, send them in the, act like a fool. But you get your marriage back. Do you hear me? Fall back in love with each other. And if you're waiting for a husband and he ain't came yet or a wife, you got to start telling yourself, God, show me the areas in me that are be making me a repellent. So that I can have somebody come chase me around my house every night. Some of y'all, y'all ain't got a problem getting them. You just got a problem keeping them. Work on it, boo. This is your commitment for the rest of this month and next month. Good deal? Then work what you have. This is the next one. Work what you have what does that mean work what you have go live on Facebook Instagram yo when I first started going live on Instagram I'd be like yo welcome everybody so good to see you wow y'all are coming in so fast today there wasn't one person on I was prophesying. 
Now there's thousands that get on with me every morning. And every single morning, I would get on and do the same thing. Oh, my goodness, Jane. It's so good to see you. There was no Jane on there, but she was going to come. Work what you have. You need money? Get your side hustle. Can you cook? Start your little cooking thing on the side. Somebody just looked at their mom and did this. Don't go there, mama. You cannot cook. Here's another one. Use what you've got. You got a good personality? You want God to open up a door for you? Go preach at the nursing home. It doesn't matter if they're sitting in their chairs like this. Go preach. Get yourself out there. Stop staying in your house just waiting on God. You ain't waiting on God. He waiting on you. You hear me? I Say, what's next, Kim? So it's here, here it is, y'all. It was, you were born for a purpose. Number two, what makes you different and use it. Number three, get rid of all the idols that are stopping you. Number four, work what you have. All right? When I started my podcast, I would put my phone right here. I went and downloaded the Anchor app, A-N-C-H-O-R. I put my phone right here, and I would teach on a, on a podcast. I didn't know who was listening and who wasn't, but it got me out of my comfort zone, and I would just talk about my life, and now it's syndicated, and I make a ton of money off of it because I kept using what I got. That was a free app I could do. Some of y'all ain't going to need therapy. Just get on podcast. Talk through it, and you'll be helping other people as you do it. Here's another one. Work what you have, use what you've got, and the last one is tend to your own garden. <laughs> tend to your own garden, boo. What does that mean? Get your nose out of other people's business. Some of y'all deserve a whole tax return this year because your nose has been in everybody's business but your own. Tend to your own garden. Stop waiting for someone to show up for you. You are not in quicksand. As long as you got hands, you can praise your way through. As long as you got feet, you can. That's why I'm so obnoxious in worship. Because God brought me through some things, man. And every time I walk up in this church, I'm explosive. Every seat in this church should be full with your friends. Because friends don't let friends go to hell. Next time that same person calls you, girl, I just need to talk. Say, I ain't going to talk to you again until you come to Limitless with me. Because, girl, I've been talking to you for a year and ain't nothing changing. But I know Pastor Real Talk Kim, she going to sit in your lap and call you higher. And then when you get it together, we're going to start a podcast together. Because the enemy's been fighting you and me. We got a lot to talk about. We're going to set some people free. You see how visions, you see how quickly vision happens. So this week, your homework is to go through every single one of those and realize that falling in love with Jesus is the best thing you'll ever do. If you've got chaos and drama in your life, get up and leave it. Cancel your subscription to other people's issues. Stop taking medicine to people that like to be sick. And I'm not saying you got to put people, don't, don't, y'all, 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 Proverbs 413. Proverbs says, guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. That doesn't mean get ratchet. That means love. Do I still got to let them sit at my table? No. Send them a box lunch, but still be nice. I used to be that girl that every other day, block them, delete them. Bye, Felicia. And then God started healing me. And I started realizing that's not what God does. God is a redeemer. Even if they're ugly to you, you still be nice. But put boundaries. You hear me? 
Well, how am I going to do that for this last quarter, Kim? Sit down and have some conversations. Say, listen, friends. I know I've tied one on with you every weekend, nay, nay, and I know you've been my DDA, designated driver, designated D D and D. What is it? See, I'm so saved, I don't even know the lingo no more. Look at y'all. Y'all know. Jesus. Here's what I'm asking of you. A commitment. For the next two months. To do everything you can to get yourself well. It's not always running to a therapist. It's falling on your face and getting to know Jesus. I believe in therapy. But sometimes the therapist is a crutch too because you refuse to get to the bottom of you. I need everybody. Y'all, on New Year's Eve, we coming in this place and we bringing those little fight for your life tags. We going to shout around our, our, our little tags that have been holding us back. And we're going to see miracles. We're going to run into 2024 completely changed and elevated to where we should have been 10 years ago. Deal? Yo, I know, we've been prophesying over ourselves, uh, Amos 9, 13. It won't be long now, God's decree said things are about to happen so fast our head is about to spin. I don't know about you, but I'm your pastor. And what's on me trickles down on you. So if it ain't trickling down on you, I got to get you to a place where you're in position. How many say I commit, Kim? I commit to doing my part. I'm about to find joy. I'm not going to be depressed. I'm going to do my part to have my marriage is about to flourish and blossom. I'm about to have the best Thanksgiving. I'm about to come do trick or trunk here. I'm going to decorate my trunk. I'm going to get out of my misery. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to walk into work and they're going to be like, who are you and where did you leave Susan? Good? We're going to do it? Say, I am not stuck in quicksand because I can still move my feet and here's what I want you to do decree I want you to open your mouth and repeat this after me say today I declare that I will walk by the spirit and not by the flesh because of Christ I am no longer a slave to what leads to my destruction I declare that I have been set free to live the abundant life that God has called me to live. Like Paul, I will put off the old self and put on the new. I declare that I will operate from a place of peace. Watch y'all get quiet. I will operate in a place of peace, a place of joy, and a place of self-control. And I will receive the victory and blessings that Jesus can bring. Hey, you better get on your feet, clap. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Was that good? Was that good? How many feel like you got released today? How many feel like, man, I can do this now? How many of you feel like your burdens ain't as big as they were when you walked in? How many? How many? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're in this room and you say, Kimberly, I don't know who Jesus is, but I want him in my life because I know the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of me. And I want him to live in my heart. Lift up your hand. Or maybe you want to rededicate your heart to Jesus. Lift up your hand. Lift it high. This ain't nothing to be bashful. Lift it high. Lift it high. We want the devil to see you should have taken us out. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this angel. Look at this. Now listen to me. You don't come to know Jesus when you get it right. Do you hear me? You come to know Jesus so he can help you get it right. He ain't like people. He ain't like most Christians. He's like, come to me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He gives you Job experiences where when you mess up, he'll send a big old fish to get you back in the right place where you roast.
first place. Deal? He has a way of turning your test into a testimony and your scars into stars. And that's what he's going to do in your life. You hear me? So everybody lift up your hands. Say, Father, forgive me of my sins. I repent. Come on, if you're online, drop a one. Say, I ask you, Lord, to live in my heart, to make me your favorite employee. I give you permission to show out so big in my life. Oh, I feel it. Say, God, thank you for joy. Thank you for peace. And all I want to do is please you. Because I know you are everything. And you love to throw the best parties. And so I'm on this journey with you now, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of me. In Jesus' name, amen.